Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, now we will start deep cervical facial space infections and today we will explain lateral pharyngeal or peripharyngeal space infection. Uh, as an example of the manner in which deep space neck infections spread freely in the head and neck, the sublingual and submandibular spaces are joined together posteriorly at the posterior aspect of the mylohyoid muscle to form the buccopharyngeal gap. Uh, it is the gap uh, between the superior and uh, middle, superior and middle constrictor muscles. Uh, it is the uh, at the junction uh, of this gap that the stylohyoid and styloglossus muscle pass between the superior and inferior middle constrictor muscle from the styloid process to the tongue and hyoid bone uh, respectively. Uh, here you can see. Uh, the buccopharyngeal gap, a triangular area between the superior and uh, middle constrictor muscle. Uh, this is the myohyoid muscle and the sublingual uh, space above this muscle and submandibular space uh, is that is the below the myohyoid muscle and they join together at the posterior aspect of the myohyoid muscle in the buccopharyngeal gap. Uh, there are two ways of spread of infections from the submandibular to the lateral pharyngeal space. One is direct through buccopharyngeal gap. Once in, uh, infections pass from the submandibular uh, space through the buccopharyngeal gap to enter the pterygo mandibular space, they then progress to the lateral pharyngeal uh, space and rapidly if left untreated to the retropharyngeal space. Uh, a second uh, pathway of uh, spread is directly around the posterior belly of the digastric muscle from the submandibular space uh, to the lateral pharyngeal space directly uh, around the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. Uh, here you can see this is the posterior belly of the digastric so infection spread directly from the submandibular space around the posterior belly of the digastric muscle to the lateral, lateral pharyngeal space. The propagation of these primary facial spaces to the secondary or deep facial spaces of the neck is associated with significant morbidity and in some cases mortality due to the significant potential for impeding airway compromise. In addition to impingement on the airway, which is the most common life-threatening complication seen with deep neck space infections, these infections may also involve the vital structures of the neck such as great vessels, carotid artery, jugular vein, so uh, these uh, deep facial space neck infections can cause even uh, greater morbidity not only due to their proximity to the uh, airway but also uh, to the, their potential communication to the mediastinum. Uh, this is the flow chart showing the spread of the infection. The infections may spread from the submandibular domesticator space to the lateral pharyngeal space and from here to the deep neck spaces. Uh, and uh, finally may enter the mediastinum. So any extension posteriorly from the pterygomandibular, submandibular or sublingual spaces will lead to the involvement of the lateral pharyngeal space. Uh, let's explain the boundaries of the lateral pharyngeal space. Uh, as this space uh, within inverted triangle shape extends from the base of the skull, that is the sphenoid bone superiorly to the level of the hyoid bone inferiorly so superiorly there is the base of the skull at the sphenoid bone and inferiorly uh, is the hyoid bone uh, the base of the skull here you can see sphenoid bone superiorly to the level of the hyoid bone inferiorly this space is uh, bordered by uh, laterally by the medial pterygoid muscle and medially by the superior pharyngeal constrictor muscle and posterior medially, it is continuous with the retropharyngeal space. Interiorly, the space is bounded by the pterygomandibular raphe. Uh, this is the lateral pharyngeal space, laterally is the medial pterygoid muscle. And posterior medially, it is continuous with the retropharyngeal space. The styloid process. Uh, and associated muscles and fascia uh, divide the lateral pharyngeal space into two compartments. Uh, one is the interior compartment that is the uh, pre-styloid uh, with the styloid process uh, and its associated muscles forming the posterior border and the posterior compartment are post-styloid bordered interiorly by the styloid process. Uh, both 
compartments are important to assess the uh, severity of the infection. The interior compartment of the lateral pharyngeal space, uh, it, it contains the deep lobe of the parotid gland, fat and lymph nodes and the posterior compartment contains the carotid sheet and its contents. The pre space contain the deep lobe of the parotid gland, fat and lymph nodes. post stylite space contains the carotid sheet and its contents. Here you can see deep lobe of the parotid gland and carotid sheet are its contents. Clinically, extensions of infections to the lateral pharyngeal space will result in trismus due to uh, involvement uh, of the medial pterygoid muscle as well as the cellulitis or uh, fluctuant swelling of the lateral neck. Uh, this swelling is uh, localized uh, between the inferior border of the mandible and sternocleidomastoid muscle and therefore a significant finding in the lateral pharyngeal space involvement is the inability to, to visualize and palpate the angle of the mandible. This uh, swelling of the lateral pharyngeal space while causing it to bulge towards the midline intraorally pressure due to edema on the superior constrictor muscle will result in bulging of the lateral wall of the oropharynx towards the uh, midline that is known as a pharyngeal draping. Here you can see the left uh, lateral pharyngeal space abscess uh, with the extraoral swelling and the uh, trismus. Uh, intraoral view of the same patient illustrating swelling of the interior tonsillar pillar and blunting of the uh, paleto uvular fold. Uh, a boy with the left uh, lateral pharyngeal space abscess uh, who is deviating his head towards the right shoulder to place the upper airway uh, over his deviated trachea. Uh, computer tomography at the level of the hyoid bone uh, showing a lateral pharyngeal space infection that is deviating the airway to the opposite side. Infections involving the lateral pharyngeal space. Patients uh, have a difficulty in swallowing and usually have a high temperature and become very sick. In addition, these patients uh, may have dysphagia, dysphonia and inability to handle salivary secretions and a high grade fever. There is often significant malaise with impeding airway compromise due to direct impingement on the oropharynx and hypopharynx. Lateral pharyngeal space infections are extremely dangerous because of their potential to spread quickly more cardially to other deep facial spaces of the neck, including retropharyngeal space. Uh, these infections can progress uh, at a rapid rate, which is concerning due to not only the effect on the airway, but also the potential involvement of the contents of these spaces, including thrombosis of internal jugular vein, erosions of the wall of the carotid artery, uh, and possible impingement on the cranial nerves uh, 9, 10, and 12. Thank you. Wish you best of luck.